Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on the DC TV shows. Today we're going to be talking about a bunch of different things. We have two new shows which are in the works, one for HBO Max, one for the CW. They're both of interest, one is Batman related, one is kind of Superman, Supergirl related. And we got a couple of other things I want to discuss towards the end of this video, so it's going to be a big video. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so the first thing we're going to be talking about is two new shows that have been announced. And now, these are just in the works, and you have to remember, these aren't 100% happening. They have been given the go-ahead, and they are developing the shows, similar to shows like Wonder Girl, and the original Dead Man show, which was announced with CW a long time ago. And there's been plenty of other shows that, you know, have been announced from legit websites. But just don't go ahead due to circumstances. Maybe the network doesn't like the show or things just don't turn out the way that maybe they hope. Which is the case for something like the Black Lightning spin-off Painkiller, which never went ahead. And also the Green Arrow and the Canary spin-off show that had a backdoor pilot, but they didn't really want to pursue anything based on what they saw when they were coming up with their ideas post that backdoor pilot. So that is obviously a one-off case and, you know, occasionally a show like The Flash, which had a backdoor pilot and Arrow, will go ahead or just a random show that will be picked up and starting to be developed like Supergirl which came out of nothing, so it wasn't a spin-off, goes ahead. So yeah, that's a kind of basic introduction to how these networks work, specifically the CW, and the fact that this isn't 100%, but right now they're working on it, and there is definitely potential for it to become a real thing. So the first project we're going to be talking about is a brand new show, and this is a Batman-related show. So this is Gotham Knights. Now this was announced and I'm reading off a TV line article which I'll link in the description below which announces that a Gotham Knights series is in development at the CW based on the DC Comics. And so I'm going to read this article out to give you guys a little idea of what is going on with this show. This was announced over a week ago and I'm just now getting around to it but I thought it would be like a good link to talk about these two shows that are in development. So this is how it goes. The CW has put into development Gotham Knights, a live action superhero series based on the DC Comics, the premise. In the wake of Bruce Wayne's murder, the TV series finds his rebellious adopted son forging an unlikely alliance with the children of Batman's enemies, when they are all framed for killing the Cape Crusader. Now branded the city's most wanted criminals, this renegade band of misfits must fight to clear their names, but in a Gotham with no Dark Knight to protect it, the city descends into the most dangerous it's ever been. However, the logline tells us hope comes from the most unexpected places, as this team of mismatched fugitives will become its next generation of saviors known as the Gotham Knights. They actually put an asterisk after this saying the character of Bruce's adopted son has not been specified. We'll talk about that in a minute because that is obviously a very big point. So Chad, Chad Five Ash and James Stotterow, sorry if I butchered their names, will will both serve as writers and executive producers on the project, while Natalie Abrams from Batwoman is a writer slash co-executive producer. Greg Belanti, Sarah Schechter, and David Madden will also serve as executive producers. Despite the aforementioned creative's shared pedigree and setting, Gotham Knights is not a spin-off of the CW's Batman, nor is it based on the Warner Bros. games video game series of the same name. So that is the official announcement, and again, I'll leave the link in the description below in case you want to go back and read it, but we're going to go up to the top of the article and start breaking it down. So number one, what do I think of a Gotham Knights show happening from what they've told us in the premise? I personally really like this idea, and I was honestly quite shocked when they announced this, because Obviously, they're going to develop new Arrowverse related shows in the future, but it's been a while since the CW show actually got the go ahead. Naomi, I believe, was the last one. Right now, there isn't anything going on apart from a couple of these shows being developed for the CW. It's mainly over on HBO Max where they're introducing some new characters, like the Green Lantern show is happening, and yes, Greg Volante is connected to it, but I don't believe it's part of the Arrowverse. Although, when you think of it, the DCEU is connected to the Arrowverse, so technically it is actually connected. But if we move on to the premise, 
I think the most interesting part of this for me is specifically the fact that this starts with Bruce Wayne's murder. The reason that is so intriguing is because we haven't actually seen the real Bruce Wayne from our Earth, Earth Prime who is the one that's been missing from Gotham all of these years in the Arrowverse. But now we're setting up a new Arrowverse show that begins in the wake of Bruce Wayne's murder, so that means Bruce Wayne has been around and he's been back in Gotham in order for him to be killed. And so this leads me to believe that this Gotham Knights show is going to be set in another Earth. And now the reason I say it is because we have Stargirl, which is on Earth 2, and we have other shows, and I think they want to continue the idea of the multiverse, but with the specific kind of Elseworld shows, this seems like an Elseworld show where it's going to be connected to the Arrowverse and at one point I would presume most of the characters are going to get a crossover with The Flash and all the other shows. But for now they want to keep it a bit separate, similar to what they did with Superman and Lois Season 1 and now they're connecting it more and more as we head into season two. So it's definitely a good starting point to start on a different earth and to not have that need to explain why Batman is around and why he was able to get killed because it would not make sense for the Batwoman version of Batwoman to actually be back suddenly because we would have seen it on Batwoman. And also at the end of the article, they specifically state it's not a Batwoman spinoff, it's a completely original idea based on DC Comics and also it's not based on the Gotham Knights game so it's going to be a new story and it's going to be different from what we've seen before and I think that is definitely interesting because they do like their spin-offs and Superman Lois is a Supergirl spin-off, The Flash is an Arrow spin-off and all of these other spin-offs haven't gone ahead like Green Arrow and the Canaries and also Painkiller so I presume the CW is like look we need some new original shows we don't want any spin-offs because they haven't really liked them recently, so why not make a new original show? And I think that's where they got this idea. So let's go ahead and break down this premise a bit more. So in the wake of Bruce Wayne's murder, the TV series finds his rebellious adopted son forging an unlikely alliance with the children of Batman's enemies when they're all framed for killing the Cape Crusader. So Batman's adopted son. Now this is specifically noted in the article, as I mentioned earlier, that the actual character hasn't been specified, but if you know the comics, you know that every kid that Batman has adopted has eventually become Robin, and in this case, his adoptive rebellious son definitely seems not much like a Dick Grayson, but more so of a Damian Wayne. Now, this would be awesome if we got our first live action Damian Wayne because obviously he's big in the comics right now, but he's especially prominent in the animated world of DC Comics. So let me know in the comments below, do you agree with my theory that Damian Wayne will be this adopted son that gets framed for his father's murder? I think it definitely could be, and it's going to be interesting seeing him form an unlikely alliance with the children of Batman's enemies. Another interesting question that we have is, who are these villains' children? Well, if you go through Batman's roster of rogues, you have the likes of the Joker, the Riddler, Penguin, Catwoman, Poison Ivy, Harley Quinn. I guess Deathstroke could count. We've seen a version of Deathstroke's kids in the Arrowverse 4, well, specifically on Titans. I would say there's a chance that it could be set in the world that Titans is set in. However, I'm going to say probably not, considering that this isn't being developed by HBO Max, but it's specifically being developed by the CW. But I'm really not sure who his allies are going to be in the show, but I'm just going to say it could be any of his most famous villains, it could be some of the smaller villains, and basically they're just going to be mini versions of those villains, but they're going to be twisted into a kind of good persona, or more like anti-heroes because they have to band together in order to prove that they're innocent, and one would guess that they would be trying to solve who actually killed Batman. What is the reason for his death, and why were they pinned as the murderers? That's definitely a story I would love to see. Let me know if you would in the comments down below. So let's continue with this. So, now branded the city's most wanted criminals, this renegade band of misfits must fight to clear their names. Again, that is the mystery part of it, finding out who actually killed Batman. But in a Gotham with no Dark Knight to protect it, the city descends into the most dangerous it's ever been. So they're going to have to protect Gotham and show that they're heroes, or at least they're good and not bad, and take down whatever threat that threatens Gotham. Now the final thing that I wanted to talk about in regards to this Gotham Knight CW show that's going to be happening is 
the showrunners and the people behind the shows. So mainly they are people who have worked on Batman related shows. So Chad and James who are going to be leading the show as executive producers and as writers. They have both worked on Batwoman and Gotham. And Natalie Abrams has worked on Batwoman. Obviously alongside Greg Belanti and Sarah Schechter who have worked on many many projects. Obviously Greg is you know the leading producer behind the Arrowverse and Sarah Schechter has worked on lots of shows including Supergirl. So it's hard to imagine that they would create a show that isn't a part of the Arrowverse considering that all of them are so connected to it and you would expect them to try and expand it even more as they head to the future and as shows like Legends of the Flash head towards you know the latter half of their runs depending on when they actually end. So I would hope this is in the Arrowverse and even though it's not a Batwoman spin-off, it's great to see maybe another Earth coming in because it definitely brings up opportunities for these different types of stories where they don't have to be bound by what's already been set up in the past. Like on Batwoman, you have Batman who has been missing rather than around and here he's around but he gets killed. Okay, so let's move on to the next TV show that is in development. This is a completely different show and this is coming from HBO Max. So this is coming from a report from Bleeding Cool. The headline is this. HBO Max puts Brian Bendis to work on a Legion of Superheroes TV show. Now, as you all know, I've been rooting for a Legion of Superheroes show for a long, long time, especially since Supergirl ended. I really want an Arrowverse Legion of Superheroes show, but this is the next best thing and I'll explain why in just a moment. Let's go ahead and read through some of this article. So in his most recent newsletter, as well as talking about all of his comic book plans, comic book writer Brian Michael Bendis also talked about writing a Legion of Superheroes TV show for HBO Max, which came about after he had written the pilot of a TV animated adaption of his and David Mack's comic book cover for Mac to direct. So this is what Brian Michael Bendis said in his most recent newsletter that he released online. So. Miracles of Miracles. HBO then asked what else I would want to do and if there's any DC properties I thought would make an interesting show. I may have yelled the word Legion louder than you want in a normal adult person business meeting. So yeah, the headline today is HBO Max has put me to work on a Legion of Superheroes TV show. At the moment it is just being developed as an adult animated series. Can you tell that I am jumping up and down about this? I've been working on it for a while and last week I was sent to the next phase. And he goes on to give readers his take on what such a show would be like. Facts. It's very early goings on, but I can tell you this will be an adaptation of the Legion of Superheroes that Ryan Sook and I have been working on for the last few years. And just like that series on sale now, it will harken back to so many classics while at the same time doing what the Legion does best, pushing all of the ideas of superheroes forward in every direction. I think Legion of Superheroes is among the greatest franchises in the history of comics and I am as honoured to be curating them as I was Spider-Man. Yes, Naomi, the show I helped create is being made by others and I'm making a Legion of Superheroes show. And for those who don't know, animation takes a long time so you may not hear anything about this for a while as I'm just getting to work on it over the break. So this is big news in regards to HBO Max and their future plans. Obviously this isn't the Arrowverse Legion of Superheroes show that I hoped for. However, as I said just before, this is the next best thing and I love the Legion of Superheroes and I love DC's animated stuff. I mean, just look at Young Justice, it's so good, and in the past you have Batman the Animated Series, Justice League the Animated Series, Superman the Animated Series, there's so many great shows that they've done, and I think the idea of doing a Legion of Superheroes show is just amazing, and it could totally be as good as Justice League the Animated Series, and I compare it to that because of, you know, the team up aspect of the show, and what it's like in the comics, and so it's very great to see Brian Michael Bendis actually work on this. He's a great writer, I love his comic books and he's been doing some great stuff with Justice League recently and obviously he's been writing Legion of Superheroes which isn't published as frequently but is still popular and yes it's not based on the Legion of Superheroes that were introduced into the Arrowverse back in Supergirl Season 3 when we had mon come back and we had Imra come back and later on we had Wynn joining the Legion and lots of references to them fighting Brainiac in the future 
and basically them being inspired by Supergirl. That is the whole reason that the Arrowverse's version of the Legion of Superheroes exist. This isn't that show. This is a Brian Michael Bendis show based on his Legion of Superheroes, which is definitely different, and it's going to be interesting to see what characters he chooses. I would presume he's going to choose his roster that he's currently working with, and if you guys want to get an idea of what this potential show could look like, I would recommend reading the comics that he's released in regards to Legion of Superheroes recently. And I think the big reason that HBO has come to him and been like, okay, DC, you're a DC guy, you've written so many comics, what do you think would be a good story? And so the reason for them asking that is because something like Naomi, which he wrote and created, is about to air on the CW and it's about to be a big thing, hopefully. So they're going to definitely want more of him and more of his stories, and so it makes complete sense that they would go to him and ask, what show would you like to do because we would like to actually make that happen. Again, I think he could have asked for a live action show, but the animated medium is a bit more like comic books and maybe he gets a bit more control if it's animated because it's not, you know, this big kind of actor's game, it's more of a creator's game and more about the artwork of the animated show and more about the story rather than being like, oh yeah, we have these big actors now act like these characters. No, it's much more driven by the showrunner and by the people behind the show, as they can come up with infinite possibilities in terms of storytelling. They have pretty much no bounds, just like comic books, so I understand why he wants to do an adult animated show. So as Brian said in his newsletter, animated shows do take a very long time, so it makes sense that we're probably not going to hear about this for a while. For instance, if you remember when they announced that Young Justice was coming back because it got cancelled after season 2, but it was revived when DC Universe was announced, you know, the old streaming service which collapsed and became part of HBO Max. That show didn't actually come for a long time, season 3 didn't come because they were working on it so long, and this is the case for most shows. I mean, if you even look as far as Rick and Morty or something, they worked on that new season, obviously not this season, but the previous season, for a long time. It was literal years, and so it's a fact that some shows just take a long time when they're animated, but then you get other examples like South Park, where they literally make them on the week that they air, which is obviously a very unique way of working, but in the case of this, it seems like it's going to be more along the lines of those other shows that take a long time to animate, like Young Justice, and they're trying to get it right, and obviously right now they're just in the story stage, where Brian's probably writing the show and coming up with the stories, you know, thinking of what can he adapt from his comic book storylines and how he would change it. So let me know down in the comments below, are you excited to see this? I'm definitely excited for a Legion of Superheroes show, even if it's not in the Arrowverse. Okay, so we have one final topic, and I told you this is going to be a big video, but this is the final thing we need to talk about, and this is the official announcement that Supergirl's final season, season 6, is going to be released on Blu-ray and DVD on officially March 8th, 2022. So that is not a long time from now. We're currently December 21st, 2021. And this makes sense given their normal schedules when they release them, because if you remember, normally the CW shows finish around like May time, and then they go on a break and they come back in October and normally around September time you would have the release of their DVD and Blu-ray of the previous season and this year Supergirl only ended in November which has given them five months between the end of the show and the release of the DVD slash Blu-ray, which is pretty much bang on the normal time that we have to wait to get our hands on it. But I wanted to bring this up specifically not just for the announcement, but what is going to be in the actual DVD or Blu-ray. So this is the press release that Warner Brothers sent out. So after six supercharged seasons, Warner Brothers, Home Entertainment and DC marked the end of an epic era with the final installment of the action pack series with the release of Supergirl, the sixth and final season on Blu-ray and DVD on March 8th, 2022. Fans can purchase the sets, which in addition to all 20 super powered episodes from season six, also contains an all new featurette and deleted scenes Supergirl the sixth and final season is priced at $25 for the DVD and $30 for the Blu-ray. So translate that to wherever you guys are. So that is obviously 
very exciting. However, the big thing here that I wanted to bring up is there is no gag reel. They haven't announced it, so I would presume it's not going to happen. And that's a huge shame because he had this issue a couple of years back in Supergirl Season 2 when they released the DVD and Blu-ray. They didn't actually release the gag reel despite there definitely being footage for a gag reel. And so, have they made the same mistake? Have they deleted all the footage? Have they just not bothered to make a gag reel for the final season? Which I definitely think is weird considering it is the final season. And fans love the gag reels. So I don't know actually what is happening because it's just totally weird that they wouldn't include a gag reel. And there's definitely enough footage for a gag reel for the final season. But what do you guys think about all of this? Let me know down in the comments below. Sorry that it's been a long video, but we did have a lot to go over in regards to the Gotham Knights show coming to the CW and Brian Michael Bendis' Legion of Superheroes show potentially coming to HBO Max along with Supergirl 6 from Final Season releasing on DVD and Blu-ray in March. When that comes out, we'll be doing giveaways for maybe a couple copies of them because obviously that's a big deal. It's the final season, so why not give away some copies of the show? So thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any videos. Also, you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.